Joshua Nowicki, and what you're seeing here is a mirage. So the camera is placed in the guard railing between cafe and restroom showers, and you're going to look here, when we look at the elevation, it is set at 8 feet. So Google Earth reads, reads this as 8 feet off of the water, which is a little higher than the 1 foot uh, camera stuff that we did earlier. And then you're gonna, we're going to take a draw a line to the first platform, which is called Platform C, which is directly out in front of it. And then another one a little bit off to the right, which is Platform Habitat. And when we pull back and look at the distances of these two, we, the first one is at a distance of 6.08 miles, platform C. And then the second one off the distance platform habitat at 10.1 miles. Why are these two important? Well, because at 8 foot elevation, the globe Earth's horizon should be less than 3.5 miles, meaning the horizon should be in front of these things. 29 feet of habitat should be blocked by the curvature in front of these objects. And yet, all of the habitat is visible, even with some compression. And you'll notice, and we'll draw a line here in a second, that the horizon is clearly behind these objects. And what makes this footage and all footage like it so, so important is that these are static objects, meaning these are not boats. These are always in one place. They're not moving or floating anywhere. And we'll draw the green line on this, and you can see, it's not, not hard to, to see. Somewhere way, way, way off in the distance is the horizon, way further than 10.1 miles. And that should not be. There, there's no curvature. I mean, and that only happens on a flat world. You will not see this on a, on a curved thing because eventually these objects should be over the side of the hill. They should be behind the curve. And we just don't see that. These two oil platforms, again, one at six and one at 10, are right in front. So tell me optically how that happens. Tell me what atmospheric condition can put the horizon behind these objects. Here, sunrise couldn't be clearer conditions, not a cloud in the sky shooting off at, at oil platforms at 6 miles and 10 miles respectively, you can't tell me that this is a mirage. 
No, no way. And even if you do say it's a mirage, tell me how a mirage puts the horizon behind the objects. That's the big key here. Uh, do this with any sort of piece of paper. Bend it in half. There, put two dots on the other side. Tell me how the horizon is behind those dots. For this curvature test, Groda 1 essentially set four lights at around one foot above the water and ice. He set up his camera at about eight miles away from the furthest light and five miles away from the closest light. The lights were spread out at about a mile apart. At each location, Groda 1 drilled down to the water just to confirm that he wasn't on some irregular ice formation and to also ensure that his test was on a level surface. The furthest light from the camera was the red light at eight miles from the camera. The blue light was at about 7 miles, the yellow was at 6 miles, and the orange light was the closest one at 5 miles away from the camera. Here he is sitting in his truck at a distance of 8 miles from the red light. Notice that the lights are all on the same flat plane. There is no earth bulge and no physical globe horizon. Next, Grota 1 lowered his camera to only 12 and 7 eighths inches above the surface. At that small elevation, the globe horizon would have to be closer than 1.27 miles, and the furthest light, the red one, should have been 29 feet below the horizon. That's taking into account the one-foot height of the light. Notice how the lights are all on the same flat plane. There's absolutely no supposed bulge here. And if there is no curvature on that frozen lake, then there is no earth curvature anywhere. Look at the red light. That light should be 29 feet below the horizon. It's just amazing that they got away with this lie for so long. Finally, Grota 1 brought his camera down even lower to just 5 and 7 eighths inches off of the ice. At this very low elevation, the red light would have to be a whopping 33 feet below the horizon. That's 34 feet minus the 1 foot height of the laser. Without question, the globe fells again. Furthermore, under the official model, the globe horizon would have to be closer than a mere 0.86 miles. There is no globe physical curve here blocking your view. As Grota 1 demonstrated on this frozen lake, regardless of the conditions, the Earth is observably, testably, repeatedly, and measurably flat.
A few years back, the Discovery Channel had a program where they used lasers and telescopes to show that the surface of a large lake was curved due to the curvature of the Earth. Let me know when you can see us on spots of the horizon. All right, Brian, how many feet are we above the lake? 24 feet. This helicopter event was entirely fabricated and it's provable. I made a video on it a while back. Remember, PBS claimed that the helicopter descended behind the curvature and then came up from behind the curvature of the Earth back into view of the telescope. But as you will see, when the helicopter descends, there is a group of birds with a peculiar flight pattern. And then when the helicopter subsequently ascends, the same birds appear and in the same exact flight pattern. Not only that, the waves match as well. Only the image of the helicopter changes, meaning that the helicopter video was added. As it lands, I got him. I got him. As it lands. As the boat reaches the horizon, the stripes begin to disappear one by one. It's pretty amazing. You can actually see it pretty clearly with this camera here. And you see that the red stripe that was at the bottom has completely disappeared. And it's now getting closer to sort of the middle uh, green stripe, yeah. that is. So we've lost about one and a half stripes. So this can only happen, why? Because of the curvature of the Earth. 